Again, this is a role-playing slash action game. There's altars that you can approach and get information from. There's instant deaths, such as walking across this bridge. Incidentally, in order to get across the bridge, go across this right side when you make it to this point. There's certain areas that you have to unlock. Here, there's an earth elemental door. Uh, this is the particular place with these vine men that guard the earth key to open that door. These are extremely dangerous. They do tons of damage to you. But again, it has a role playing and an action feel. It's fantastic. Uh, here we open the door. You can position yourself against these guys, even though they have high hit points, which means they have more than a thousand, so that they can't hit you. And you just keep whacking away on them, and eventually you see the hit points drop below high and then once it reaches zero of course they're dead throughout the game you collect gold pieces which are not much use in the game but here's actually an example of where you can use it for every two thousand gold you can increase your spell points by two your maximum spell points here is the final battle in the game um, this is the Jendorian Overlord is what he's called and of course he has a gender with him and all you really need to do is position yourself as before and exploit attacking the gender otherwise you're probably gonna lose this one isn't as fast you'll notice he's swinging more slowly but he had more hit points Now for some reason, the Overlord doesn't attack you, which is kind of interesting. And there's a reason for that, which I'll explain in a second here. But if you attack him, of course, he unleashes a slew of fireballs toward you. But again, the ranged artificial intelligence of the game is lacking quite a bit. So he doesn't try to reposition himself to keep shooting at you. So he'll just shoot into the wall forever. Uh, that's one of the minor disappointments in the game. Um, but again, remember this game was made in 1989. You can continue to hit the Overlord for a very long time. It, just when it seems like he's not going to die, he actually will. It just takes a long time. I don't know how many hit points he has exactly, but it sure seems like over 5,000. I accelerated it here just to show you he is killable. Now when you defeat him, you think that's the end of the game. Well, you'd be wrong. You get no clues as to what to do next. You go up to his throne, there's nothing there. So this is how you beat the game. You talk to him. That's why he didn't attack. So if you've already killed him, it's okay, believe it or not. If you keep going back and forth into his room, eventually he will reappear. So once you talk to him, he gives you a story about how he actually doesn't like being evil, and it was all a big mistake, and that the place is now going to explode, and you need to get out of here as quickly as possible. So if you jump in the pit, if you go to the right and jump in the pit down into this dumpy area here, you need to run as fast as you can to get out of this castle. There's a few things on the way which impede your progress such as this maze it can be a real pain in the butt but just keep going in random directions and eventually you'll get out of it. Uh, one thing you can do is um, equip some type of velocity vial or cast a spell to make you go faster. Uh, there's obstacles in the way so that makes it even harder to get out of here but as you can see I just cast a spell and I'm moving much quicker and this is the ending of the game what happens is it says the castle explodes and that's it you're presented with this background not to ex despite the shortcomings of the AI sometimes and some of the other quirkiness of the game Prophecy is one of the best action role-playing games that I've ever played, especially considering it was made in 1989.
I highly recommend this game if you want a challenge and you love action role playing games. And that wraps up our review.